more and more full-time RVers are looking for that peace of mind, that security. That's right, they're buying land. What's up, blind viewers? That's right. Now we have Idaho. They are doubling their prices for RV campsites for anybody out of state that doesn't live in the state. And we have reports of everybody saying the same thing. It's harder and harder and harder to find an open campsite. Plus the boondocking sites are being closed down. Yes, it's true. I know you don't believe it when I say it, but how about when other people say it? The state of Idaho, who recently announced all camping and entry fees for non-residents have doubled at select state parks. Full hookups will cost $64 for non-residents. You guys know the camping industry is exploding. There's 1.1 million new RVers coming in this year. And, and like only 40,000 new campsites or something. Yeah. I, I read it somewhere in like RV Park Association, Owners Association. It was just a ridiculously low number in comparison to who's coming in yeah and we, being that we have the rv Oz squad we get emails all the time of people that can't find campgrounds there's no vacancy that's right so with all this going on more and more rvers are uh deciding to get a little bit of security that peace of mind that place where they can run to so if they can't find a spot or if prices go way way up and it's astronomical just to stay at an rv park and yeah, I know everybody likes to boondock, but you can't always boondock all the time. Even you guys that just love this boondock and stuff, you just got to sometimes you got to go and you got to plug in, relax, dump everything, get cleaned up. So if it gets rough, what are you going to do? Well, a couple people decided they know exactly what they're going to do. They're going to buy some land and not just any land. All right, we all know about the uh, Caravan Carolyn. She bought her little park model in Arizona. We have Nomadic Fanatic who bought his small house. And uh, Carolyn still travels here and there when she wants to. Uh, Nomadic Fanatic still basically lives in his RV even when he's at his home. Um, but this is a little bit different. We have uh, Dreaming Out Loud RVing. Now, these guys, they bought a lot. That's right, they went into a campsite and they didn't rent a spot. They didn't get one for a month or two. No, they bought the spot. We bought some property. <laughs> We've been looking at lots of different types of property, yep. places for what, three years? <laughs> or, or longer. So we brought, bought some property in Tennessee. Gatlinburg. Gatlinburg, Tennessee. Which That's right. They bought their own little RV spot in Gatlinburg, Tennessee. So, if they're out and about doing whatever they're going to be doing and times get tough or they just need a place where they know they can come back to, plug in, hook up, and have everything that they need, they got a spot, no one can tell them no, and no one can charge them outrageous fees. They bought their own lot. They went in, they did a whole bunch of work, they ripped up the the uh, concrete got rid of some trees that were around the roots were underneath and buckling everything up so they, they had to redo everything so they're putting a lot of work into it work and money into it now so they can enjoy it for years to come now we have the rv odd couple they took it one step further. That's right. What do you mean one step further? Well, they didn't want to buy a lot. They didn't want to buy a house. They didn't want to buy a plot of land. They want to buy an RV park. That's right, an RV park. Now there's this RV park that was uh, built and put in place, I think in the 70s. Uh, there's an old couple that own it. They just got too old. They can't do the upkeep anymore. So it's uh, kind of been sitting around for like three years, kind of falling apart and everything. And so they want to go in and uh, swoop down in and they want to buy it. That's right. And they want to revamp it and make it, bring it back to not modernize it, but modernize it enough, but keep it that old 70s old park feel. 
so you can go in and uh, have fun and enjoy nature, not have, you know, neighbors that you can reach out and touch and swing sets and pools and all that all crammed in like a big commercialized uh, RV lot. They want to keep it campy. Now, these guys, they are not looking to uh, just go ahead and float in this expense on their own. I do believe uh, their thinking is, is that they want this not just to be a place where they can go and retreat and relax uh, if things get tough and they have a spot. I think they want this to be a money-making venture. So, they are actually looking to the RV Odd Squad. That's what they call their viewers. And uh, they're looking to the Odd Squad to go ahead. Anybody out there that wants to join in, uh, donate, not donate, but uh, contribute some funds, invest some funds is the word I'm looking for. Invest. Yeah, blah, 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 blah. I knew it would come to me. Takes me out. I'm getting old. Bear with me. <laughs> anyway, some folks from the Odd Squad to invest with them also so they can come in and have a you know this joint venture and actually purchase an RV park. So there you go. People are just like, hey, it's getting tough out here. Things are changing. And while some sit back and deny, 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 and no matter what you say, they say, no, 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 I don't have a problem. Well, I just went into the national park the other day, drove right in, they didn't ask me for anything, I just went right in. I just went from this campsite to that campsite and then went to another campsite. They were all empty. There was nobody there. I didn't have to book a reservation or anything. I just drove right on in. There's no problem. I don't know what you're all talking about. So as some deny, 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 others are actually being prepared and going, hey, prices are going up. There's more RVs being sold than there are RV parks and spaces. BLM land is getting shut down left and right because of misuse and misconduct. And hey, let's face it. Let's be real. RVers aren't all what they all brag to be because even the best campsites and camping spots, they have their problems. And if the RV Odd Squad go ahead and go through with this and they buy their little uh, campsite, I think they're going to find out because there's another person that talks about it all the time owners. My wife and I own a campground in Central Texas. And, uh, you know, campers see a lot of stuff. But the campground owner, I, I call it having the big eye. We see a lot of stuff. Kind of like the, the person that manages a restaurant with a million things going on. They see more than just the customer does. We see a lot of that stuff at our campground. And a lot of it is not really good, not cool. And so what we see at our campground is similar to what other campground owners and their staff sees all across the country. Now, some will say that uh, you're not a full-time nomad if you're buying spots and land and houses and uh, you're a sellout and you're a fake and you're whatever. Well, I think there's a difference between being a sellout and being smart. You can be one of those ones that deny, deny, deny and watch the world crumble around you or you could be the ones that go, hey, I still like this lifestyle. I'm going to take precautions and I'm going to get me set up with a safe space just in case, because I think, see things going downhill. Hopefully, once all this pandemic madness goes away and more and more people go back to work and things open up and people can travel freely, maybe all this madness will settle down. But just in case it doesn't, I want to prepare myself. And I think that's a smart move. So what I want you to do is I want you to leave me a comment below. Are they selling out? Are they being smart? Are they still considered full-time nomads or are now they just weekend warriors? What do you think? Leave it in the comments below because I know what I think. I think an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. So you can still love the lifestyle. You can still live the lifestyle, but there's nothing wrong with being smart. And just like having that emergency fund in your pocket in case everything goes to shit and you need to repair, there's nothing wrong with having that safe space to go driving back to where you know you can park any time you want. This blind views and yeah, that's the way I see it. What we do here is go back, 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 back.